Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, then my name is Lucy and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Nottingham. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you all about how you can prepare for med school over the summer holidays or in this case, over the lockdown period. I have received so many messages on Instagram from people saying that they have all this free time suddenly and they want to be able to do something productive in it and prepare for med school. And they've asked me if there's anything they can read, any books they can get. So in this video I wanted to address that question properly and just give you ideas of anything that you can read or anything you can do to prepare for med school in September or in the years ahead and all the medical school essentials that I think you need to be a successful medical student. So I think there's one thing I want to make really really clear and that is don't worry if you don't want to do anything at all and you just want to relax for the next few months. That is absolutely fine. Studying medicine is really intense and so I really would recommend using this lockdown period and using the summer holidays to just relax and enjoy being at home, enjoy not having a commitment to have to study anything or revise for anything because as soon as you get to med school you're pretty much going to be studying and revising for the next like at least five years of your life um, and to be honest then for the rest of your life because you're always learning as a doctor. Obviously unless your medical school have set you work to do in the summer holidays then you are not expected to turn up having like read the whole anatomy textbook or anything like that. Everything will be taught from scratch for you so you don't have to pre-read anything but I'm aware that a lot of you are probably a bit like me and you're really excited for medical school and you just want to get a little taster of what it's going to be like so this is just for people who want to do something extra and want to prepare in advance but remember you really don't have to and some of these things that I'm going to mention are just kind of things you can do for fun. So the first thing I would recommend is just to be comfortable with the A-level biology and chemistry material so maybe revisiting some of those things you've done is a good place to start key areas that I would say that you're going to need in your first year of medical school is things like the cell cycle, cell basics, so like what's in a cell, what does each part of the cell do, maybe like the basic heart anatomy, how the heart works, the cardiac cycle, anything that is related to like human biology or medicine in any way, maybe you could just give it a little read over and just check that you remember the key concepts. Same with chemistry, to be honest not a lot of chemistry comes up in medical school I don't think um, maybe some of like the underlying principles do but you're not going to have to remember how to do like electrophilic addition or whatever it was I can't even remember the mechanisms now but you could look over some concepts so like acid base reactions and things like that but you don't need to know it in loads of detail at all and as I've said the med school will be taking you through all of the things you need to know anyway. In terms of actually reading ahead and getting a head start on the course, to be honest I wouldn't really bother. The medical school have obviously got a very structured way of teaching you and they will take you through everything in an order that they think is best, but Having said that, if you are just genuinely interested and you just want to do a bit of reading for fun, then I wouldn't delve into all the clinical stuff, but anatomy is a really interesting topic to just start slowly like getting your head around and just like knowing what key sort of words mean, like anatomical terms and things like that. So a website that I use throughout medical school um, and I think is really, really good for students is Teach Me Anatomy. So this website is basically divided into all the different parts of the body. It has really like good clear pictures and it's not too rambly and waffly so it's like quite concise and just summarises all the key points quite nicely I think. So if you want to take a look at that website it could be quite interesting for you. There didn't used to be like subscriptions or anything, but I think there are now, but you can just ignore all of that, you don't need to pay for the website, just browse through the free version and that's absolutely fine, that's all that I used. At Nottingham Med School you don't even start anatomy until the second term, so I wouldn't worry about getting any textbooks or anything because you will be told which one is best for you to get for your course. And like I said, as you don't start it straight away, then at least at Nottingham, you can start your pre-reading for anatomy in the Christmas holidays and you don't need to do that now. So yeah, have a look if you're interested, but don't worry about learning anything at the moment. And if you are extra, extra keen and you really wanna do something extra, then another area I could recommend having a look at is embryology. So in the first term at Nottingham, we did quite a lot of embryology and it was probably one of the topics that I found hardest to get my head around so when I was having the embryology lectures I often felt like it was all just going over my head because I wasn't really understanding like 
what was really going on. So if you did want to be super prepared, you could have a look at some basic embryology and just familiarise yourself with, again, the sort of anatomical terms and what the kind of structures all look like because it gets really confusing. And again, Teach Me Anatomy is really good for embryology as well. So it has really nice pictures and you can just have a browse through and see what you want to read. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about pre-reading because like I've stressed a lot, you really don't need to stress about it and you are completely free to just do absolutely nothing if that's what you want to do. So next I'm going to talk about some medical school essentials, things that you're going to need at some point at least in your medical school course. So it goes without saying that you're going to need a stethoscope and there's nothing like the feeling of getting into medical school and getting your first stethoscope. I remember getting mine and I think it's such a kind of like special moment. So most people get the Lippmann ones and you can get them in all different colours. So I mean you could buy one now if you want because you are going to need it but similarly if you don't want to yet then you can wait, you can buy it like when you actually start because obviously you're not going to be like listening to people's chests on your very first day so there will be plenty of time for you to get one but if you do want to get one now it can be quite good to just familiarise yourself with how it actually works and it seems really obvious because like surely you just hold it to someone's skin and then you can hear things but just kind of understanding that there's two different sides to it there's the diaphragm and the bell side often they come with like one of these covers on the bell part and basically a lot of us it took us like two years to learn that if it has that cover on then this isn't actually functioning as the bell of the stethoscope but it's actually functioning as a paediatric diaphragm so just make sure you can remove that and you know how to do that you can twist this bit here to change like where you're hearing the sound so whether you want to hear it on the diaphragm or the bell side and yeah just kind of enjoy having a little play around with it just have a practice listening to your own heart or listening to your own bowel sounds once you've got a stethoscope i feel like you really start to feel like a medical student on the topic of kind of like clinical skills then another thing i think it's really useful to get and i would recommend getting is one of these manual blood pressure monitors so basically it's the cuff that goes around the arm and then it's one of these little dial things with a kind of pump here. And don't worry, um, you obviously don't need to get this before you start. Wait till you get taught how to actually use it if you want, but at some point I would recommend getting one because taking blood pressure isn't necessarily a hard skill. I think once you've practiced it a few times the actual steps of doing it are very simple but it's just one of those things that you just become more efficient and you become better at it if you just practice it and this is a really inexpensive piece of equipment that you can get and then you can just practice it on like your family and friends all the time it just sort of gets you used to doing it so that if you then are asked to do it in a clinical setting or in an OSCE it won't be a skill that you like have only practiced once in the clinical skills room it will be something that you've practiced loads before. Something else that we were told to get at Nottingham was a dictaphone and I'm not gonna lie to you I'm in third year now nearly fourth year and I have never ever used it. I think the reason they asked you to get it is because we do this module where you get assigned a patient and you have to sort of interview them and you have to follow them through their kind of healthcare journey so I think maybe I was meant to like record what my patient was saying to me and then I could like listen to it back but I just took notes when he was speaking so yeah, not really sure why we were told to get that, but if your medical school has told you to, then that's something that you could invest in. But yeah, I wouldn't say it's one of my personal medical school essentials. So then what resources are you going to need when you start medical school? So technology wise, most people do their notes on a laptop or an iPad. So if you haven't got one of these already, then maybe think about investing in one and do some research on what you want to get. Different types of laptop or different iPads are good for different things. I'm not an expert on technology at all. I just have a MacBook. To be honest, I don't even know which one it is. I don't think it's a Pro. I think it's a MacBook Air. Um, and I've never had any problem with it. Like it does everything I need it to do. And that just allows me to obviously do all my work, especially in this period when it's online, take it to lectures and type notes up, access all the PowerPoints for the lectures online. So yeah, you are definitely gonna need some form of computer or iPad thing. But having said that, I'm not actually one of the people that did all their notes on their laptop. I do now, but in first and second year, I hand wrote all of my notes. I used so many pads of lined paper while I was at uni. So definitely invest in some of them if you're gonna hand write your notes. And then once I'd made my original notes, I transferred all of my notes into these little notebooks. Um, and it just meant I could have like a notebook for each topic and 
I just like decorated them. So obviously colored pens, highlighters, highly recommended as well. And I ended up using so many of these little books, like probably like 30. So if you want to do something like that, think about what like notebook you want to get, maybe get some bigger sheets of paper to do revision posters. I would definitely recommend getting flashcards as well. And to be honest, although these are kind of more revision materials, I would recommend getting them earlier on so that as you're going through lectures, if there's anything that you think, oh yeah, that that would be quite good to put on a flashcard. You can do it as you go along and make your flashcards as you go because then when it comes to revision time, you've got all of your flashcards ready and you're not having to make them. You can just actually practice using them and testing yourself. I've also recently been writing notes up into these big pucker pads, so you could consider getting something like that. Something I would recommend having as well is like a smaller notebook, maybe one sort of this size or even smaller, that you can just have in your bag. So if you're ever like on a ward or you're at GP practice and you hear something that you want to write down, then you can just quickly write it down because obviously you can't like sit with your laptop out in the GP practice or like carry it around the ward. I also got lots of like those big ring binder folders as well. Just to put all of my notes in and file them all away into like different modules. I also invested in a printer, it wasn't that expensive and actually I ended up using it a lot more than I thought. I didn't have it at the beginning of medical school because I used to use the printer that was in my halls and I would use my printing credits that I got like from being a student at the University of Nottingham but then it got really frustrating that I could only ever print something like from the library or from my halls especially in second year when I moved into a house so I wanted my own printer and I did end up printing out quite a lot of things because you might sort of get study guides that you can print or there might be some lectures that you don't want to kind of make notes on but you just want to have print out and put in a folder you might want to print like pictures of radiology or pictures of histology or like anatomy so being able to print easily is quite a good thing I would say but obviously if you are making all your notes online then you're not really going to need to necessarily print so much unless you want to print your notes out at the end of, after you've made them but that would be something that's a lot easier to just do in the library as a one-off but if you think you're going to be printing a lot then I would invest in a printer. So that's all the pre-reading and all the medical school resources I think you would need but finally I just wanted to say if you want to get yourself excited about medical school and if you want to see what the medical school as a whole has to offer you then it could be fun to just look through the medical society like the medstock page on your uh, university's website so like your SU website and you can just see all of the different medical specific societies that are on offer to you so there's often sports and music creative societies that are just for medical students to fit in with their kind of busy timetables and there are also lots of volunteering opportunities at medical school so for example I do Teddy Bear Hospital which is where we go into primary schools and like rainbow and brownie groups and we just like teach them about what doctors do and give them tips on staying healthy, keeping their teeth healthy, eating healthily, doing exercise and that's something that's really fun and it's good to kind of build up a bit of a CV while you're at med school as well. So just have a look at the volunteering opportunities that are available and see if there's anything you fancy doing. Obviously when you get to medical school there will be like a freshers fair and you'll be able to find out a lot more there and then you'll be able to join anything that you want to join but I just think it's quite fun to have a look at what's on offer and sort of decide what things you might want to have a try of. So I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck to everyone who is starting medical school this year or anyone who is thinking of applying in the future. It really is such a great course to be studying and you should be so excited and so proud of yourself for getting in as well. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more medicine related videos and lots more as well and please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. See you very soon for more videos and bye!